going to call this meeting of the City of Montpelier Development Review Board to order. It is October 5th, 2020. Um, my name is Kate McCarthy and I will serve as your chair this evening. So I'd like to start by introducing the other members of the Development Review Board. And the way I'm going to do that is say their names and then they can unmute and say hello. So we'll start with Abby White. Hey everybody, Abby White here. I'm, I think I'm the newest member of the board last week or two weeks ago was my first meeting. So good to be with you. Thanks, Abby. Uh, Rob Goodwin. Right here. Hi, Rob. Roger Kranz. Good evening, everyone. Hello, Roger. And then Michael Azorchuk. Hello, it's Michael. Good evening. Well, thanks um, to have you shared it. Uh, also with us this evening are Meredith Crandall, whom you know, and broadcast on Orca, so you will see that as well. You conduct staff review. Uh, as she said earlier, she may doing, be doing it just by audio because of her connection. Am I the only one who's getting a delay from Kate? Yeah, I, I can't hear Kate very well. Okay, how about now? That's better. Okay. I'm also going to use my headphones. Um, so, Meredith, I'm handing it over to you for the staff review. Okay. Uh, Mike, I think my connection's a bit rough. Is there any chance you could share that um, staff overview document I sent to you and just share that first page that has the Zoom meeting info on it so that anybody watching via Orca can? I don't think it's essential, but it helps. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll get started. Just take me a second to share it. You yeah, can start. Okay. I can start. Um, so for those viewing this meeting via Orca Media, you can participate in the Development Review Board meeting via the Zoom platform through either video or telephone access options, and those are going to show up on the screen shortly. Um, and you can download, there will also be a link to how to download the complete meeting packet. Um, so if anybody has a problem accessing the meeting, please email me. Meredith Crandall at M Crandall at Montpelier hyphen VT dot org. Hold on one second. It's a little loud here in the background. Forgot to turn something off. Um, yeah, further, if you're having difficulties, whoop, okay, while accessing the video conferencing features in Zoom meeting or otherwise have questions that are technical questions, you can message me through the chat function in Zoom. Um, this new Zoom meeting is being recorded as well as streamed via Orca Media. Turning your video on is optional. Public testimony will be taken verbally. The chat function should only be used for troubleshooting or logistics questions as noted previously. Um, the chat will be added to the public record if it's used. Please keep your microphone on mute when you are not speaking to reduce background noise. For those participating by phone, star six will allow you to mute or unmute if you don't have a separate mute button on your phone. As host, I can also sometimes manually mute and unmute most participants. If you are interested in speaking on a particular matter and did not say you would like to speak previously, please raise your hand, either physically or by using the raise hand button on your toolbar. For those on the phone, you can press star nine to have that raise hand show up in Zoom, or you can state your name if you're unmuted. Once the chair has recognized you to participate, please unmute your microphone, Confirm that you can be heard and provide your full name and address for the record. You are then free to provide your questions or comments, aiming to keep them to two minutes. This is for non-applicants. Um, the members will have the opportunity to respond or ask questions of you, and the applicant may have an opportunity to respond as well. The chair may grant additional time for speakers who have follow-up questions or comments. After you have finished, please mute your microphone again. Um, the chair will then move on. Um, in the event that the public is unable to access this meeting, it will be continued to a time and place certain. If you're having connectivity issues, try turning off your video or closing other applications on your phone or computer. If you are have, having trouble seeing the document screen share, all files are uploaded to the agendas and minutes pages for this meeting on the city website. Please note that all votes taken during this meeting will be done by roll call vote. I'll now hand the meeting back over to the chair. Thank you, Mike. You can take off your screen share. Great. Thank you, Meredith. All right, the next item on our agenda is the approval of the agenda, which we will do by roll call. Um, are there any modifications to the agenda? All right, um, is there a motion to approve the agenda? 
So moved. Motion by Roger. Second. Second by Rob. I'll call the roll. Rob? Yes. Abby? Yes. Michael? Yes. Roger? Yes. And I also vote yes. I feel like I'm missing someone. Let me see. Oops, it's five of us. Okay, great. We have an agenda. Thank you. Um, item five on our agenda is comments from the chair, and I do not have any comments this evening. So we'll move on to item six, which is our meeting minutes from September 21st, 2020. And those eligible to vote are myself, Rob, Abby, Michael, and Roger. We are all, all eligible to vote. Um, are there any corrections or modifications to the minutes? Okay, I have one, one addition, which is a request that um, under the comments from the chair from our last meeting, they be amended to include that I, I made note that we are going to be using deliberative session um, on a temporary basis until the end of December. Uh, so it's a trial period. And um, that was part of my comments from the chair that I think is uh, important to include because it's a change to our procedure. So if that could be added, I would appreciate it. Got it. Thanks, Meredith. All right. No other corrections or additions, then I would entertain a motion up to the minutes. So moved. Motion by Rob. Second. By Abby. Um, any further discussion? Okay, I'll call the roll. Rob. Yes. Abby. Yes. Uh, Michael? Yes. Roger? Yes. And I also vote yes. Um, thank you. We have adopted those minutes. Um, I apologize. It, it may be that my internet connection is, is unstable, and you're going to be able to tell that better than I can. So if I need to change something, please um, flag me down in, in some way. Um, through the chat, which I'll try and keep it to a different room. If need it, so. All right, then turning to our only application this evening, One National Life Drive. This is a, re a review of a 17 foot antenna to be installed on the roof. So the first thing I'm going to do is swear in the witnesses who are here to be heard on this. And I believe that witnesses are Joe Taimeki, have you raised your right hand if you're going to be testifying? I think my camera's backwards, sorry. It's my... <laughs> I trust you. <laughs> it's like this one, right? Um, so do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth under the pains and penalties of perjury? I do. Great, thank you. And um, Will Dodge, are you also going to be testifying on this? Yes, or I'll make, I'll make comments as well. So yes, we should put that into the record, so you will. Okay. Do you solemnly okay. swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth under the pains and penalties of perjury? I do. Thank you very much. All right, great. So what we usually do is we start with an overview from staff on the project, and then you as the applicants will have a few minutes to, to provide anything that you would like to add. Uh, Roger, do you have a question? I, I don't have a question, but I uh, need to say that I am a sustaining member of Vermont Public Radio. I give a monthly contribution, and that will not interfere with my impartial judgment on this application. Thank you, Roger. I appreciate that. Um, if that is uh, amenable to the applicants and the other board members, um, we'll, we'll proceed. Yeah, no objection. Roger. As no, no objection, yes. No objection. Okay, so I'll have to say the same. <laughs> all right, we're all showing our colors. That, that's all right. <laughs> no, um, very good. I appreciate having those things up front, no matter how small they may seem. They do Thank you. Um, great. So, um, Meredith, could you please give us an overview of the project? Sure. So, I'm going to keep this fairly short. Um, the uh, you know BPR is requesting to put a antenna on for for well there's both a anyway it's two parts to the antenna but the one we're really concerned about and the one that triggered development review board review is one that is more than 10 feet tall 
um, that is going to be going on top of the National Life Building. That's the only reason this is before the DRB. Um, otherwise, it would be able to be administratively approved. Um, just a quick note that this will be the first time that this particular special use provision is reviewed by the Development Review Board because typically these types of installations have been um, reviewed by the PUC and so we waive, waive any need for a zoning permit. Um, so this is the first run through since this provision was adopted in 2018. So feel free to critique it as much as you want. <laughs> we'll, we'll take any comments like that into consideration. Um, so I'll, that's all I've got really for it. It's a pretty straightforward. Okay. okay. Um, thank you, Meredith. So um, I would like to turn it over now to the applicants to it to um, we, we have the staff report and we've received your application materials, but would welcome um, your overview of the project and any information you'd like us to know up front. Sure. Thank you, Madam Chair, and thank you, Meredith, and, and um, uh, the staff's been really great in reviewing all of this. So as, um, um, as was said, this is a, um, an application to actually install two antennas, one which is 17 feet tall and thus does not qualify as a small facility, and that's what's called the transmit antenna, and that antenna will be located on the National Life rooftop basically clamped to an existing pipe that's on the roof um, and then there's a second antenna a much smaller one that's basically side mounted off the top of the penthouse that one is basically extending horizontally really horizontally more than it is vertically so you won't really see that one also and that one is also basically going to be clamped onto an existing pipe the uh, operating equipment for the antenna will all be inside an existing washer closet. All of the cabling associated with the antennas will basically be run right into the building. So you won't see them on the facade of the building at all. Um, we received, the reason that we're before you as Meredith suggested is the Public Utility Commission decided that this was the first time they were going to determine that um, that an installation before them was only a one-way form of communication instead of two-way, even though this transmits and receives, but we did not prevail on that battle. So that's why we are before you and great, very grateful that you're here. The other aspect to this is we've received design review for the project, um, uh, I guess two weeks ago. And we also just today were issued, or we weren't issued, but a minor notice went out under Act 250 that basically if no member of the public or other party objects, it'll be approved by the 21st. Um, what I should have probably said at the very outset is that the, the real reason for this, and um, Joe Taimeki, who's the chief engineer for VPR, can expand upon it if you have questions, is to improve VPR signal strength in Montpelier and Washington County. Right now, its antenna is located in a place where it's just not, it's not able to hit a lot of the places where people drive to or walk to uh, or go. So um, the idea of this facility, what's called a translator facility, is to take that signal that's coming from Burlington and basically rebroadcast it within uh, Montpelier and Washington County, not just for VPR listeners, but also for public safety in the sense that there's a lot of like public emergency alerts that all go out through VPR, and that includes, you know, if there's an event specific to Washington County. So um, I think we there's a lot of criteria for you to go to. So maybe I'll stop there. But I'm I'm I, either Joe or I are happy to address any of that with you. Great, thank you for that overview. There are a lot of criteria, and um, we'll give you an opportunity to. Uh, remark on those as we go through if, if you choose. So typically what I like to do is just kind of walk through the staff report, um, identifying the areas um, that need more work and not spending much time on the others, but then also giving DRB members a chance to ask any questions. So I think we'll go ahead and start that process. So the first um, section of standards to which this is subject is the overlay zoning district, um, design review district. And as we heard, the design review committee um, has said that this meets the standards um, and finds the, the proposal complies with the requirements. So um, do DRB members have any questions about that? Okay, we'll, we'll move past that. 
So the next batch of standards we need to make sure are adhered to are our general standards, starting with the use standards. Um, staff report indicates that we are indeed looking at an antenna, but not a communication structure or tower, the thing that it's mounted on. So we're looking at this part, not this part, because the building is already built. Um, it is a permitted use in this area. And the proposal from staff is that this um, is an allowed use. Staff has, Meredith has flagged for us that we pay attention to the words that we're using because when we get to the use specific standards later in the staff report, they're called something slightly different. So that, that is considered flagged. Um, the next section is the dimensional standards, which has to do with when something's built on the land, how far back it is, how much, how much it covers, how high it is, and nothing about this uh, changes the dimensional standards of the underlying structures. So um, recommendation is that it meets these. And then the next batch of general standards are demolition, riparian areas, wetlands and vernal pools, steep slopes, erosion control, stormwater management, access and circulation, parking and loading and signs. These are not applicable. Um, so I Kate, you are fading. but not rival. Any members have any questions about how these are met? Oh, we I'm gonna we, move. we lost you, Kate, there for a little while. You might want to we before you hit like you, we we heard you through signs saying they're not applicable, and then it went dead. Ah, okay. 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 I'm gonna move. I'm gonna move locations and see if that helps. Hold on a sec. Or may, actually, maybe what I'll do for starters is just turn off my video. Can you? Is it stable? Okay. Thanks. And and do let me know. So yes, um, the general standards either don't apply or appear appear to have been met. But I want to give DRB members a chance to ask questions. Are there any questions? No. Okay. Very good. So that brings us to the special use standards. Um, and as Meredith has indicated in the staff report, this is when there's something that may require a, a different level of review or standard um, because of the nature of that development requiring um, just another look. So a wireless communication facility is one such use. And this applies, uh, a zoning permit is required when there is not a certificate of public good granted by the Department of Public, uh, by the Public Commission, and when it's over 10 feet. And both, both of those conditions are met as we heard in the overview. So um, I'm just looking through our standards here. So the standards that apply to this are eight standards on page seven of our staff report related to section three, 122.i roof mounted antenna supporting facilities. Um, staff finds that these eight standards are met. And just for, for the record, and because this is the first time we're going through this, I just want to note that um, the eight standards are that roof mounted can only go on commercial, industrial, institutional, or multi unit built over 35, 30, at least 35 feet in height. Um, it shouldn't, it, it cannot extend above the roof line of the building by more than 20 feet. Um, visual impact must be considered in line with standards of this section. Galvanized gray finish, unless the board finds that another color is contextually compatible. Um, there are requirements for transmission lines and signs, neither of which apply in this situation because neither are present. And then roof mounted structures are shall be screened by a parapet or other device, et cetera. And based on the testimony we've heard, as well as the staff report, um, these eight standards appear to be met. Um, are there, again, not, not to rush, but um, I, I will just turn it over to board members. Are there any questions about how this application does or does not meet these standards or, or any clarification you'd like from the applicants?
Okay. I have just one question. It's, it's curiosity is nothing else. Um, how tall is the tallest um, structure up on the roof today? So what I can say about that is I'm not sure the, the, of the exact height, but um, you've probably noticed, and it's actually in the, um, the simulations that we provided, that there's this Christmas ornamental structure that, um, that's only lit up uh, during the holiday season. It's basically a flagpole with lights on it. That is um, substantially, not substantially, it's probably about 10 feet, would you say, taller, Joe, total? 10 or 15 feet taller. 10 or 15 least, yeah. feet taller. And that will continue to be the case. And obviously, that structure will be seen at night. Ours will not. Ours is not proposed to be, the antenna is not going to be lit in any way. So. Okay. Well, thank you. That's a useful comparison. We do keep our eye out for the holiday <laughs> decorations. Right. When we're coming home on the highway. Um, all right. Thank you. That is a very good reference point. Um, are there any questions from other board members? All right. The remaining criteria within the special use standards have to do with stealth wireless communications facilities, antenna supporting structures, which as we've determined are the building and it is already present, not being modified, and discontinuance but that doesn't apply because we're not discontinuing facilities. I, as, as someone who is working with this section of statute or um, zoning for the first time, I, I do need to ask Meredith a question, which is what is a stealth wireless communication facility? Honestly, I'm not a hundred percent sure. It's not very well defined. Maybe Mike can speak up on that. Yeah, the stealth facilities are ones that are disguised as something else. So you will periodically see if you're driving down the highway, these very poor examples of pine trees that uh, are, which were required in, by Vermont and other states as, as when they get their permits to, you know, if you were going to put them in along the highways to try to go and disguise them as pine trees. So, um, right. but there are other ways of using stealth technology in, in, making the antennas look like something that they're not, something more common in the landscape so that way they don't stand out. Okay, thank you, that, that, is, that is good to know. It is not one of those. Um, okay, great. All right, um, so let's move on to the next section of standards and the final section of standards. Um, our site plan standards in the zoning bylaw. And it has been determined that this is a minor site plan, uh, not a major site plan. And within that, um, there are a few things we're looking at. One is access and circulation, has to do with how cars and, pe and people and cars and people walking and come and go to the site. It's not applicable because the addition of this antenna will not affect that. And then the next piece has to do with landscaping and screening. Um, and this is something that comes into play when there's a significant change to the, to the site, when there's a change of use. Um, I'm stumbling a little here, Meredith, but um, when, when there's a significant change of use that affects the, that affects the building and the site and I believe that the, the recommendation is, and the kind of also logical conclusion is that this is not a major change to the site. And as such, it's our option as a board to find that this section does not apply. And I'd be interested in other board members' feelings about that. I would very much agree. Uh, me too. I agree. Okay. okay. Thanks, Roger. All right. Uh, hey, um, um, just one question. How many other antennas are up there now of kind of, this one's going to be the largest, it sounds like. Um, so just for comparison. So I think, um, and Joe, 
keep me honest about this, but this will this may be the tallest antenna. It won't necessarily be the most noticeable. Between the two rooftops, there are multiple wireless facilities. So the majority of them are on the other building, not the national, you know, not the national light, but where the where the agency has most of its buildings. This one has Montpelier Police and Fire Department on it. It has a number of different, um, you know, smaller, like anything from dish antennas to other whip antennas. So the only, um, you know, for the for the most part, the reason for that is the building is so tall and it's positioned so well that all wireless providers or radio or everyone realizes this is the best facility. And by doing it this way, you avoid having to have a separate standalone tower that you would probably see for multiple places. So um, I'm not sure if that totally answers your question, but this is one of about, I think, I think we counted eight separate installations total. And as part of this, we ran what's called an intermodulation study to basically make sure that we don't, that VPR signals are not going to interfere or won't cause interference with others and vice versa. That, that helps to answer the question. Thank you. I was trying to get a sense of the scale. That's helpful. Okay, good. Any other questions about the site plan standards from DRB members? Okay, I will just note that the other parts that we usually look at in site plan review, like outdoor lighting, outdoor seating, um, display, storage, solar access are, are not germane to this, um, to this review, given the nature of the development being proposed. All right, that felt really quick, but it also seemed like the right amount of time to spend on that. I, I will at this moment make sure of that by pausing and seeing if there are any additional questions from DRB members or from the applicants. I think we're good on our end. Okay, very good. Well then, at this point, I will let you know um, that to better manage deliberations uh, during this Zoom environment in which we find ourselves, we are operating temporarily under a policy where we deliberate in closed session for all applications. Um, and the motion to go into deliberative session doesn't indicate any problems or concerns with, with your application. It's just something we're trying to do with each applicant for consistency's sake. Uh, we'll deliberate this evening and deliver a written decision as soon as possible after the close of our deliberations. So with that, I will entertain a motion to close the public hearing on this application and move into deliberative session at the close of the public meeting. <laughs> I motion to close the public hearing on uh, this VPR transmit and receives antennas application uh, and move into delivers session at the end of the public meeting. Thank you. Motion from Rob. Is there a second? Second. Second from Rob. Oh, second from Roger. Thank you. I'll call the roll on the motion. Rob? Yes. Abby? Yes. Michael? Yes. Uh, Roger? Yes. And I will also vote yes. Um, Thank you very much. We will get you a decision as soon as we can and really appreciate your being here tonight. Um, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for working through all of this and uh, we'll yes. look forward to hearing from you. Yeah, thank you for your very time. Good. Thanks. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night. All right, we'll move on to other business. Um, our next meeting is October 19th. Does anyone else have any other business? Just a quick Note, this is from Meredith. Um, all the DRB members, I have emailed you the link and access information for the deliberative session. So please make sure to check your email after we close this out. And I will probably log out after this. I won't go to the deliberative session unless you think you need me, Meredith. Nope, this seems to be working well enough. Okay. I, I didn't even send you the link. <laughs> well then. 
a vote of confidence. Excellent. All right. Um, so I'm going to propose we not take a break. Um, please just log off of this and then log into the deliberative session before we do that. Um, the thing that I ask for is a motion to adjourn to deliberative session. Is that correct? Yes. To close, I mean, you can close the, to close the public meeting and yeah, move to deliberative. Okay. All right. Is there a motion to close the public meeting and move to deliberative? We already did that. Wait, we're closing the meeting. We're because we. Oh. Yeah, that's what I meant. Closing the okay. meeting. Close the hearing on the specific application, and then we close the meeting, which is the overall conduct of business. So. I'll move we close the meeting. All right. Motion from Rogers. There a second. Second. Second from Abby. Um, Rob. Yes. Abby. Yes. Michael. Yes. Roger. Yes. I also vote yes. Um, the meeting is adjourned. We will reconvene in deliberative session at the separate link. Um, thanks everybody who watched and participated and I will see board members soon.